Hello everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on Nginx tutorial. Since guys, Nginx is quite a vast topic to understand, in this session we'll mainly focus on all the basic knowledge that you need to get started with Nginx. So now without wasting any further time, let me take you to the topics for today's session. So we'll start this session by understanding what is a web server and then we'll get into what exactly is Nginx. Once you understand Nginx, I'll tell you about the Nginx architecture and the reasons on why you should learn Nginx or why you should use Nginx. And finally, I'll end this session by showing you how to install Nginx and then deploy an application on the web server. Right? So I hope the agenda is clear to you guys. Alright, so that's great. So now let's get started. Now when you type https.google.com in your browser, what do you observe? In few seconds that you know that your Google homepage appears in front of your screen, right? But have you ever wondered in the process of you typing the URL, pressing enter and the page appearing, a lot of things happens guys. Well, what happens is a request is initiated by your browser leaving your local area network and then that particular request traverses through the global area network till it reaches one of the computers which is basically assigned to serve your Google's homepage. Now then this particular computer in return initiates a response containing all the contents of the page so for example, if you want to search google.com slash edureka or slash any other thing or any other page, it will basically initiate a response containing the contents of the page, right? So basically the response takes the similar route through the global area network till it reaches the local area network and finally to your computer browser, right? So what have you observed over here? When you type in a URL, a request is basically generated to a computer connecting those web pages, right? So now when that computer initiates a response containing the web pages that you've requested for these web pages basically travel through the global area network and reach your local area network and finally to your browser. So now the computer which is basically serving you with the web page is nothing but the web server guys. So when I say web server, I mainly mean the computer that is serving you the web pages. So this computer is basically known as a web server, right? So I hope I'm clear with this point. So now let me tell you what exactly a web server is. Well, web servers are basically computers which deliver the requested web pages. So basically every web server has an IP address and a domain name. All right, so now let me just explain you this point. Now, so for example, suppose you want to search HTTPS slash edureka.co slash blog, right? So suppose you basically want to search for our blog's homepage. What would you do? You would basically type in this URL on your browser, right? Now what happens is as soon as you type your URL, a request is generated traveling to your local area network and it, the request goes to a web server whose domain name is edureka.co. Now what this web server does is it fetches the page with the name blog. So basically that is the index page that we want to fetch, right? That is slash blog. So the page with the name blog is fetched and then this particular web server again sends the response to the users to the global area network again and then it reaches to your browser. So basically whenever you search for slash blog or slash community or anything else what happens is it comes to a web server whose domain name is edureka.co and then your index page basically whatever you're searching for is fetched and then that particular page has been sent to your browser, right? So basically this particular computer is set to be web server. So guys now that you've understood web server, let me just tell you one more point over here. What happens is when you use a web server, you need applications or software applications which can make your computer a web server, right? So basically any computer can become a web server. So if you want to make your computer web server, you have to install server software and connect the machine to the internet, which is basically the global area network. So in the market, there are various web server software such as XAMPP, Apache, Nginx, Tornado, Caddy and Microsoft Internet Information Services, right? So guys, since this session is basically focusing on Nginx, we'll be mainly focusing on Nginx server only. So now let me just tell you what exactly is Nginx. Well, Nginx is an open source software. So it's basically a web server used for reverse proxying, caching and the load balancing. So Nginx basically also provides your HTTP server capabilities and is mainly designed for maximum performance stability. Apart from that, let me also tell you that you know it also provides functions for a proxy server for an email such as IMAP, POP3 and SMTP and also uses a non-threaded and event-driven architecture. So if I have to define Nginx for you or if you have to understand Nginx, in simple terms, it's basically a web server by which you can make sure that you know your page load time is reduced. 
So, for example, if you're working on an enterprise, you need to make sure that you know the customers coming to your web page or the customers searching for your web pages do not have to wait a long time for your page to load, right? So, when you use Nginx or when you start using Nginx and you make sure that you know your applications are getting deployed through Nginx server, you'll make sure that you know your page load time is definitely reduced, right? So now that you've got an idea of Nginx, let me just tell you the architecture of Nginx, right? So Nginx mainly uses a master-slave architecture, guys. So basically this master-slave architecture supports the event-driven, asynchronous and the non-blocking model, right? So now I know by looking at this definition, you've just not understood anything like what exactly is event-driven, what exactly is asynchronous and what exactly is non-blocking model. Don't worry, I'll tell you when we get into the architecture. So now as all of us know, traditional processes or thread based models of handling concurrent connections involve handling each and every connection with a separate process or thread and blocking on the network or input or output operations, right? So basically when you have a process thread model, what happens is each and every separate process basically can be used for an input or you know you can generate a separate thread for each and every connection that is required, right? Now, depending on the application, it can be very inefficient in terms of the memory and CPU consumption. Just imagine you had to do this for a large enterprise. So when you look at for a large enterprise with, you know, so much of web pages and so much of data on each of its web pages, it can be very inefficient in terms of memory and CPU consumption, right? So spawning a separate process or a thread basically requires preparation of a new runtime environment including allocation of heap and stack memory and also the creation of new execution context. Not only this guys, but let me also tell you that additional CPU time is also spent creating these items, which can eventually also lead to poor performance due to thread crashing or excessive context switching, right? Now to avoid such kind of complications, Nginx put its master slave architecture that you can see on the screen. So Nginx mainly focused on the ongoing development of the advanced event-based mechanisms in the numerous numbers of operating systems. So Nginx uses multiplexing and event notifications heavily and dedicates the specific tasks to separate processes. So for example, if you have 10 tasks, then you can have these 10 tasks to be dedicated to 10 different processes, right? So apart from this, connections are also processed in highly efficient run loop in a limited number of single thread processes called workers. So if you observe on your screen, there are mainly three workers that I've mentioned over here, right? Within each of these three workers, Nginx can handle many thousands of concurrent connections and requests per second. Now what happens over here is, Nginx doesn't spawn a process or a thread for every connection. Instead, what happens is, worker processes accept new requests from a shared listen socket and execute a highly efficient run loop inside each worker to process thousands of connections per worker, right? So I hope that you've understood what worker does is what worker processes basically do is they accept new requests from a shared listen socket and execute a highly efficient run loop inside each worker process to process thousands of requests. So every worker can process thousands of requests. Now, apart from that, if you observe in the diagram, you have a master, right? So according to the Nginx architecture, there's basically a single master and there are many several worker processes. So there are also a couple of special purposes processes like the proxy cache that you can see on the screen like it has a cache loader and a cache manager, right? So now before I get into the caching part of Nginx, let me just tell you about the master. So the master process is basically responsible for reading and validating configuration. So when I say reading and validating configuration, I mean that, you know, master is responsible for creating binding and crossing sockets. It is also responsible for starting, terminating and maintaining the configured number of worker processes. So suppose if you have 10 worker processes, it's not required that, you know, all the 10 worker processes would be running for 1000 different separate processes, right? It can happen that, you know, few workers have less number of processes working and few workers have more number of processes working, right? Not only this, but the master node is also responsible for reconfiguring without any service interruption. It also controls non-stop binary upgrades and reopening of the log files and also compiles embedded Perl scripts, right? So the master processes is basically responsible for basically reading and validating the configuration. So when I say configuration in Nginx, everything is defined in a configuration file. So don't worry, I'll tell you how that is defined and what all you can define. So, but for now, let's come back to architecture. So guys, I hope that you know you've understood what the master process does. Now coming to the cache loader and the cache manager, 
The cache loader is mainly responsible for checking the on disk cache items and populating engines in memory database with the cache metadata. The cache loader process is responsible for checking the on disk cache items and populating the engines in memory database with the cache metadata. So the cache loader basically prepares engines instances to work with the files already stored on the disk in a specifically allocated directory structure. So basically it traverses the directories, checks cache content with the metadata, updates the relevant entries in shared memory and then also exits when everything is clean and ready for use, right? Now, apart from this, there's also a cache manager, as I said. So cache manager is mostly responsible for cache expiration and invalidation. So it basically stays in the memory during a normal engine's operation and is restarted by the master process in case of failure, right? So what's basically happening in caching is that, so for example, if you go to our eduraker.co and then if you want to search for DevOps tutorial blog and then you get the page and then you read for it, right? Now, after a while, you come back to the same page. What happens is this page when you want to retrieve back the same page, it doesn't go through the complete process of requesting and then a response and then the web server fetches the page and then the response is generated. Instead, what happens is this particular page, since you've already searched for it, may be stored in the cache, right? So what the cache loader and the cache manager do is they look into which page are you searching for and they send you back the page immediately. So it happens very quickly, guys. So guys, this was all about architecture. Let me just repeat it for you once again. So what happens is when you send a request, when you search for a web page or when you search for any item on the web, what happens is a HTTP request or an HTTPS request is generated to the Nginx architecture. Now what the master does over here is it understands it selects which worker has to take up this process and then dedicates this particular process to a specific worker. Now then the worker works on it and then it fetches the web page from the web server and then it finally sends you back the response, right? So it's a very simple architecture guys if you look through above so you just have to understand that you know it works on event driven model and it also works on asynchronous and non-blocking model and it's a simple master slave architecture right so it has one master and there are various worker nodes working for it and then you can use these worker nodes for processing thousands of requests at a time right so i hope i'm clear with this point all right so that's great so now that you've understood Nginx architecture, let's look into the reasons on why you should learn Nginx or why you should use Nginx, right? So you can use Nginx because of the features that you can see on the screen. It's basically very easy to install and maintain. When I say it's very easy to install and maintain, believe me guys, it's just three steps or four steps to install Nginx onto your PC and make sure that you know you have a web server working for you. And it's very easy to maintain because you know you just need to type a single command to just restart or you know just maintain or stop the service or you can do various other functionalities don't worry i'll show you how you can install in the next part of the session after that let me also tell you that you know it reduces the wait time of the users so as you know in the session i was telling you that you know you don't have to wait a lot of time when you use nginx right so basically even if you're fetching a web page which takes time to load and which is very heavy by using Nginx server, you can make sure that, you know, your wait time is reduced. Not only this, but it also improves the performance. So when I say it improves performance, I mean that, you know, if you already have two or more web servers running in the same application, Nginx can accelerate performance by routing traffic to those web servers in a way that, you know, it enhances the overall speed, right? Not only this, but it also offers load balancing. So basically a load balancer is device or a service that distributes the traffic load on two or more web servers, right? So this basically provides fault tolerance and increases performance also. Now, if you look into the market, there are various kinds of commercial hardware load balancers available in the market, which are actually very expensive and, you know, somewhat complex to set up and service. But when it comes to Nginx, Nginx can easily act as a robust load balancer that will cut off all your costs and also give you the needed load balancing, right? So this is a very good point of Nginx that you need to take care of when you're using Nginx for a large enterprise. Moving on to the next feature, the next feature is that, you know, Nginx offers scalability. Apart from load balancing, Nginx also offers scalability. So as we all know that, you know, traditional web services like Apache and Internet Information Services can serve incoming requests without any problem until the number of concurrent requests reach a certain limit, right? Let's say 1000. So whenever the number rises, the performance starts to degrade eventually. So that is because the way those servers were designed and also the model by which the server web requests, right? 
So basically, if you have to use such kind of servers for a large enterprise or for let's say you know you wanted to access 3000 requests, right? You cannot use such servers for such kind of requests because you know it will take a lot of CPU cores and also RAM and will not give you the intended results. So in such cases, if you use Nginx, Nginx does not suffer from this problem and it can easily handle increasing number of concurrent requests, right? So suppose you know if you have 20,000 requests that you want to access, right? You can definitely do it with Nginx. Apart from all these features, guys, the final feature is on the fly upgrades. So when I say on the fly upgrades, I mean that, you know, Nginx is one of the very few systems that can be patched or upgrade without having to take a downtime and disrupt your businesses, right? So obviously you would never want to disrupt your business, right? So Nginx is one such software which can get upgraded without having to take any downtime for your enterprise, right? So if you have to look for the features, it's basically ease of installation and maintenance. It reduces the wait time for users. It improves performance. It improves load balancing. It offers scalability and it also offers the on the fly upgrades, right? So guys, I hope that you know you've understood the features of Nginx. Now in Nginx, everything is based on configuration. So the core settings of Nginx are mainly configured in the Nginx config file. So the config file is basically structured into context. So when I say context, so there are mainly two types of contents that you can set up. That is the events context and the HTTP context, right? So basically this structure of configuration file enables you to, you know, basically mention some advanced layering of your configuration as each and every context can have nested context that inherit everything from the parent, but can also override a setting as needed, right? So don't worry. We'll look into it when we look into the hands on part where I'll show you when we deploy an application. Now, apart from these two contexts, guys, there are various other things in the file that can be tweaked based on your needs. But Nginx is so simple to use that, you know, you can go along with it even with the default settings. So some of the most important pieces of the Nginx config file are the worker process, the worker connections, access log and error log and the gzip. So basically the worker process is basically a setting that defines the number of worker processes that Nginx will use. So since Nginx is a single credit, this number could usually be equal to the number of CPU cores. Coming to the worker connections, the worker connections is the maximum number of simultaneous connections for each worker processes and tells our worker processes how many people can simultaneously be served by Nginx, right? So basically the bigger it is, the more simultaneous users the Nginx will be able to serve. Coming to the third one, which is the access log and the error log. These are the files that Nginx will use to log any errors and access attempts. So these logs are generally reviewed for debugging and troubleshooting. Coming to the last setting that is gzip. These are the settings for the gzip compression of Nginx responses. So enabling this one along with the various sub settings that by default are committed out will result in quite a big performance upgrade. So I hope I'm clear with these points. So basically, apart from the events context and the HTTP contents, you can also configure for your worker processes, worker connections, access log and error log and the gzip, right? So guys, I hope that you know you've understood what Nginx is. Let's look into the next topic that is basically how to install Nginx. So basically to install Nginx, you need to follow these four steps, which are install Nginx, adjust the firewall, check your server, and then you can manage your Nginx process. So we'll start by installing Nginx and once you see that you know your Nginx is installed, you have to adjust your firewall. Once you see that you know your firewall is also adjusted, you can check your server whether, whether your server is running or not. And then once your server is running, it means that you know your server is up and running. And finally, you can manage the Nginx process by which I mean that you know you can restart or you can stop, right? So I hope I'm clear. So now let's just shift back to our Ubuntu operating system so that I show you how you can install Nginx, right? All right, so I'll just shift back to my virtual machine. So the first step that you can do is you can just update your VM. So for that, you just can type in sudo apt get update. So just type in the password. So you can see that, you know, your VM is getting updated. Right. So now you can see that, you know, your VM is updated. Now to install Nginx, you just have to type in sudo apt get install Nginx, right? So you can see that, you know, your Nginx is getting installed. So it just says, do you want to continue? You just type in yes. That's why. Right. So you can see that your know, Nginx is getting installed. Let's wait for it to install. So now that it's installed, what you can simply do is you can just enable your firewall. So for that, you just have to type in sudo ufw enable, right? 
So when you type this command, you'll see that you know the firewall is active and is enabled on your system start, right? So you can just check if your nginx is installed or not by checking for the version. So for that, you just have to type in nginx hyphen v. So you can see that you know nginx version 1.2.1 on Ubuntu has been installed, right? Now, since you've enabled your firewall, what you can do is you can list the application configuration that your firewall knows, right? So for that, you'll just type in sudo ufw app list. So when you type on this command, you'll see that you know you'll get all the available applications are nginx full, nginx http, and nginx https, right? So basically, this profile opens port port 80, that is basically the unencrypted web traffic. And also the port 443 that allows the you know encrypted traffic. The Nginx HTTP opens only port 80. That means that it only allows the unencrypted traffic. And Nginx HTTPS opens the port 443 that allows basically the encrypted traffic, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow Nginx full so that you know both port 80 and 443 are allowed. So basically both the unencrypted traffic and the encrypted traffic are allowed. So for that I'll just type in sudo ufw allow in quotations you just have to type in nginx full right so you'll see that you know rule added for nginx full now similarly if you just want to allow nginx http or nginx https you just have to type in the same command and mention http and similarly https right so you can see that you know based on whatever kind of traffic that you want to allow you can make sure the application has been enabled right so now if you want to check if our applications are working or not, you can just check the status to check the status. You can just type in sudo ufw status. So when you check on the status, you can clearly see that, you know, nginx full http and https are allowed, right? So that means they're completely fine and they're working, right? Now, if you just want to check whether, you know, where your nginx server is working or not, you can just type in the command sudo system ctl status nginx all right there's a typo error that's my bad i just missed an s over here so you just have to mention sudo system ctl status nginx so when you mention this command you'll see that you know nginx service a high performance web server and a reverse proxy is active right so you'll clear words you see that you know it's active and you can see that you know there's a master process running for it and you see the process id and the main pid and the task right so that means the service is running perfectly, right? So guys, that's how you can install Nginx. So basically to install Nginx, you just have to use such few commands that, you know, you have to first use the command of install Nginx and then you have to enable your firewall. Once you enable your firewall, you can just check what are applications are available for your firewall. And then you have to just make sure that, you know, you make them active. Once they are active and running, you can check your system status, right? So I hope that, you know, you have understood how to install Nginx on your system. So now let's move forward to the hands-on part. So in the hands-on part, what we are basically going to do is I'm going to deploy an application which is already stored in a folder on my virtual machine. So I'm going to deploy that application on my local host. Well, you can also do it on your remote host by just mentioning the ID, right? So I'm going to use this web server Nginx and then I'm going to deploy an application on it, right? So I hope I'm clear how we can do that. So let me just shift back and show you how we're going to do that. So first of all, let me just open the folder where I've mentioned that particular application. So I'll just clear my screen. So now I'll just go to the folder and show you. So let me just change to downloads. I think I've mentioned in downloads. I'll just list. All right. So we have a demo folder. So if you just go to the demo folder and then if you list the files, you can see that, you know, I have an index HTML file and a CSS file. So a single page website, which I'm going to deploy on the Nginx service, right? So now before I start with the hands on part, let me just tell you that, you know, I've installed curl. I've installed open SSH server and I've also installed the web editor. So basically I'm comfortable with web editor. So I've just installed that. I've installed curl to just in case fetch the website in the command line itself and the open SSH server. That is basically I've installed the open SSH server. So I hope I'm clear with the prerequisites. I've just installed these three and the engine service is also installed on my system that you just saw. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come out of this directories and now initially the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy all the files that are present in downloads that you know just that demo file is present. So I'm going to copy this demo file into the var slash www directory, right? So for that you'll just type in the command sudo cp hyphen r slash home slash edureka slash downloads 
and then I'll mention a dot so that you know all are copied and then I'll mention it uh, and then I'll mention the destination directory so the destination directory is slash var slash www right so I'll mention this oh I'm sorry I mentioned an extra space over here an extra space is not needed so I'll just press on enter again so let's just go to our slash var that slash www to check whether you know we've copied or not so I'll just list all right so when I list you can see that you know our demo folder has come over here right so that means you know we have copied our demo folder to slash var slash www directory now what you have to do is you basically have to point your domain name to your new server right so what I mean by that is your domain name needs to point to your new server right so basically you have to create a record in your hosting providers DNS settings by pointing your domain name. Let's say you know sample.com to the server IP address. So let's say I consider 0.0.0.0, .0, right? So for that what you'll do is you'll just go to the directory of var slash www slash demo. So I'll just change it to demo, right? And then over here you'll open the host file, right? So you'll just type in sudo vi slash etc slash host. Right. So when you open this file, you can see that, you know, you can mention the domain name and the IP address. So I'll just press on enter. So over here I'll mention my domain name and the IP address. So let's say I consider the IP address to be 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and then I mention the domain name to be sample.com. Right. So once I'm done with that, I'll just save. So if I just open this file again, you can see that, you know, we have mentioned our domain name and the IP address. So we'll just save this file and then we'll go back. Now what you have to do is you have to move your website static files to the server, right? So since you can't deliver your website, if the server doesn't have your files, you just have to add your files to the server. So what you can simply do is you can just use the command SCP hyphen R star 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. And then you can just mention colon slash var slash www slash demo, right? So what is basically happening is all the files are getting copied securely so that you know your website static files are moved to the server, right? So I'll just press on enter. So I'll just continue with yes. So when I say yes, I just have to mention the password. All right. So you can see that, you know, there's a permission denied. So that's basically because our files are not getting the permission. So what I'll first do is I'll just change the permission for the file. So for that, I'll type in the command sudo ch mod hyphen r777 and let's say for all files, right? So I'll just mention star and now I'll just run back the same command and let's mention the password. So when you mention the password, you can see that, you know, these particular files have been moved to the server, right? So that's how you can just move the files. Now in this step, guys, let me just tell you one more thing over here. I'm doing it on localhost, so I've mentioned the IP to be 0.0.0.0. .0. That's what I've mentioned in the file that I opened, right? The host file, right? But for example, if you're doing it for a remote server, what you can simply do is you just have to mention root, add the root, and the IP address for that that particular remote server, right? So I hope that's clear. So now what we'll do is we'll just configure our Nginx service to serve to our website, right? So basically, if you want to configure your Nginx service to serve to your website, Let's just shift back to our Nginx folder first so that you can see the files available and then I'll tell you how you can configure, right? So for that, what you can simply do is you can just type in cd slash etc slash Nginx, right? So you'll just go back to the Nginx folder. So now in this Nginx folder, basically all the configuration files are located. So there are mainly two directories. So I'll just list and show you. So if you see there are mainly two directories that you should be interested about that is the sites available and the sites enabled. So basically in these two directories what is happening is the sites available contains all the individual configuration files for all your possible static websites and the sites enabled contains the links to the configuration files that the Nginx will actually read and run, right? So what's happening in sites available is it contains all the individual configuration files for all your possible static websites. And the sites enable contains the links to the configuration files that Nginx will actually read and run, right? So what we're going to basically do is we're going to create a configuration file in the sites available and then we're going to create a symbolic link to that file in the sites enabled to actually tell Nginx to run it, right? So I hope I'm clear with it. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to create a configuration file in the sites available and then create a link to the sites enabled file so that you know we can actually tell Nginx to run that particular file, right? 
So for that what you'll simply do is you'll just open the sites available directory in that you'll just open the demo folder and then you'll open a new file in which you're going to mention few parameters, right? So for that you'll just type in sudo vi sites available slash demo, right? So a new file has opened up. So over here you can mention all the parameters. So I'll just mention server and then listen at default server so that is basically a socket then i'll mention listen colon and then again we'll mention default server right then i'll mention root and then i'll mention the directory for the domain name that is slash var slash www slash demo then i'll mention in the index file so index file in our application was index.html right so i'll just mention index index.html right and then I'll mention server name to be demo and then I'll mention location and then I'll create a try catch block which says if the location doesn't match then you can throw an error of 404 right so I'll just mention that so guys that's all you have to mention you just have to mention server listen at default server again default server and then you have to mention the root and then you have to mention the domain names directory, then the index file, and then the try catch block, right? So this file basically tells Nginx several things. That is, it delivers files from the folder slash var slash www. Oh my bad. I put an extra w over here, so I'll just change that. All right. So as I was saying, this file basically delivers files from the folder slash var slash www slash demo. The main index page is called index.html. So the requests that are requesting for sample.com should be served by this particular server block. Now what you have to simply do is you just have to save this file, right? So I'll just go and save this file and then your file is created, right? Now that your file is created, you just have to add this particular file to the sites enabled folder to tell Nginx to enable it, right? So for that, what you'll simply do is you'll type in the command sudo ln hyphen s slash etc slash nginx slash sites available slash demo and then copy to etc slash nginx sites enabled and then again copy to demo right so basically all our files would be copied so now moving forward, let me tell you that, you know, our Nginx service was also running on our localhost 80, right? So since we've just configured our port number for our website also to be 80, both the Nginx server and your website are trying to access on the same port, right? So to just change that, what you can simply do is you can just change the default file in the enabled folder and then you can remove that file and put it somewhere else, right? So what I'll simply do is I'll just move that file to somewhere else. So I'll just type in sudo move that is mv and then mention slash etc slash nginx slash sites enabled slash default let's say i'll mention it to be in the home folder so i'll just type in home slash edureka and then i'll mention the file to be default right so i'll just move this to this particular directory so the file has been moved now what you can simply do is you just have to restart your nginx to enable this so you just type in sudo system ctl restart nginx right so you'll see that you know your nginx service has been restarted so let's just open firefox now and then i'll mention 0.0.0.0 all right so when i mentioned my ip address that's what i mentioned over there you'll see that you know uh, this is the particular application that we were trying to deploy right so it has features like toggle theme and toggle outline, but that's not an issue. Our main motive was to deploy an application using Nginx service and we did that, right? So I hope that you know you've understood how you can deploy a simple application using Nginx service. So guys, that was all for this particular session. I hope you found this session informative. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!